We believe Kenna Metal has the best total value for our customers. We can supply the full package of tooling that they could use in their operation. McKenna Metal Company was founded in 1938 by Philip McKenna here in a garage in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Mr. McKenna took his knowledge of metallurgy and used tungsten as the base material to make some tools that were doing things that were never done in industry before. Nick. Titan, how you doing? Good to see Great. you. Chuck. Titan, great to see you. Great to see you again. Hey, welcome to Kenna Metal here in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Ooh, I'm excited. This is an impressive facility. But you guys don't actually manufacture tools here. What do you guys do in this facility? That's right, Titan. Actually, what we do is all of our research and development is done here, as well as testing of new tools before we roll them out to our facilities across the world. You're going to meet a lot of talented metallurgists and chemists and some really talented machinists who run operations here to test all of our tools before we send them to a customer. It's awesome. So testing. So you guys actually have CNC machines right here? We do. And actually, I can tell you about it, or I could just show you. That'd be awesome. Let's do it. The company was a very small operation, 10 people in that original location, and they were trying to develop products that they could sell into the marketplace. Then the Second World War broke out. During the war, that 10-person uh, operation grew to over 1,000 associates, and this was a huge boon for our country and for the McKenna Company. There were new materials being looked at for aircraft, for war machinery, and the McKenna Company had an opportunity to take their findings in tungsten carbide-based tooling to help the war effort. And nearly 80 years later, our corporate operations are still located here in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. So this is our state-of-the-art corporate campus. We have three different buildings here, and what we're in today is the Technology Center. This is where all the really cool stuff happens. In this building, we have our material scientists, our chemists, the engineers, they all sit throughout this building. So you guys actually design the inserts, the tools right here? We do. Both from a drawing perspective, clear on through testing out those new products to making sure the designs make sense. Obviously, it's an iterative approach. You keep on refining until you get the best tool, the best life that you expect. So this is our machining technology laboratory. It's where we do all the testing for our new products, as well as uh, bring people in, be able to understand the new products will be something we can make and make efficient. So we've got some products being run here right now. Let me show you. Hey, Mark, come here. Mark, Hi. Titan, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So Mark's our supervisor here at the lab. So Mark, what are we doing over here? Here we're going to be cutting titanium, the half-inch end mill. This is Katie. Katie. Hi. Nice to meet you. You run this big old machine right here? Yep. <laughs> How many axis of movement is that? This is a nine axis machine. Nine axis machine. Katie, laying it down right here yep. at Kenna Metal. <laughs> Love it. So what are you going to do today? So we're going to do some tricordial milling with the end mill. Okay. Ready to see it? Yeah, I'd love to. We have laboratories around the globe that support the effort, but this facility is staffed by doctors of chemistry, PhDs of raw material. Nice but a big team of talented machinists that are doing product development on our new innovations that are gonna solve the problems of tomorrow for our customers. So Harvey 3 is our leading line of end mills, use a lot in aerospace. Cutting in titanium is what it likes to do. See, this was 86 inches per minute, cut like butter. Cut like butter all day long, right? Chips look great. How's the tool? Beautiful, as always. We work every day to help our customers improve their productivity. We want to make sure it's proven on our floor before it's tested on the customer's floor.
My name is Jake. I'm a journeyman machinist at Kennemental. This is a high performance ceramic end mill. Today we're cutting Inconel at 300 inches per minute. Tunable boring bar is made for deep boring applications where we have to have a tight tolerance but a very good surface finish. It has a dynamic absorber inside of it that suppresses the vibration of the first bending mode of the boring bar to eliminate chatter to allow you to hang the boring bar out at 10 times diameter. So what material is this? Uh, this is 4140, 200 Brunel. Awesome. Nice deep cut, huh? Yeah, it's about 200 thou deep. 42 inches a minute, 1600 RPM. Nice. This is one of our newest products, Mill 411. It's taken off great. Fits a need that our customers had for true 90 degree wall finish. with the Mill 411 right here at Kenna Metal, Latrobe, Pennsylvania, USA. Boom. The following is brought to you by Kenna Metal. So Titan, we don't just cut metal here at Kenna Metal. We've got something pretty extreme to show you today. This is black granite. Black granite's about 40 times harder than concrete. Oh, this is crazy. Yeah, how about it? So this is like a test machine? Yeah, this is our rock testing machine. We use this to really accelerate our wear and really give our tools intense impact and really see what our tools can do. This is what they're actually using on the roads to mill the roads down. So this is like a 3D printed version. Yep. How big is the actual tool? It's uh, roughly around 11, 11 feet wide, so about roughly the road width, yeah. So you scale this thing up 11 times, and that's your tool, and that's this right. thing just blasts through granite, and bang, 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 oh, yeah, bang. Roads, yeah. Our product line is the broadest in the industry, we believe. A customer has a single lathe in a shop somewhere located here in America to a tunnel boring machine that's grinding material to create a new highway system anywhere in the world. It goes back to that foundation based in tungsten carbide being at the foundation of nearly all of our product line. And tungsten, you can see it's here in a fine powder. And we take these fine powders and we mix them together through what's a process called milling. It's like a big tumbler. We take and we rotate them over and over again, get into a particle size that we want based upon the specific tool that we're making. And then how does it actually bind? So we take them by mixing the powders together. We add other alloys to it as well. And then the time that they're mixed together, the duration, what type of pellets we have in there that break it down and get to a size, that ultimately creates a powder that then, once it gets formed together through a, a pressing or extrusion, is, is really bound together with that binding. So here's an example of, of rod that was extruded, uh, that powder, and you can see it's in what's called still its green state. And when it's in its green state, it's still flexible. It's not hard this yet. This is carbide right here. That's carbide. And you can move it all around. That's awesome. And then how does it become hard? Hardening is done through a process called sintering. And sintering is really just a really big furnace that gets between 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit up to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Inserts are formed and shaped really in two major ways, either through injection molding or through pressing. So injection molding helps us to get some real unique and, and difficult shapes, like in the case of this N for a modular drill that we can't do by the other option be pressing. Once we press inserts, they're in what's called their green state. They're brittle, and also they have to be pressed larger, because ultimately, whenever the insert gets done through the sintering process, it shrinks up to 50% of its size. When an insert gets to this stage, it goes through a coating process? It does. After the sintering, we take it over and do some additional grinding that gets the insert into its final shape. Um, as well as get to that final dimension that we need based upon the application. 
So what makes Canna Metal different? I mean, it's like the recipes, right? It's the patents, it's how you guys actually make the tools that's different. It is, we have thousands of patents in place. A lot of those are on our recipes, those material science expertise that we have, that we put in the tools, understanding how best that different coatings work in different scenarios, different applications for our customers. So good, it's like a cooking show right here, cooking carbide right here at Canna Metal USA, Latrobe. Oh. Boom! It's not only this research center proving those tools out before they get to the field, but it's our field people. It's our engineers that work at facilities on implementing the right tool for a particular job at one of our customers. All right, Titan, so in here we have our customer application support group. This is a really important group for our customers. Keep those green lights green on their machines, help them understand how to use our products better to perform even better out there. So how many uh, calls do you get per day? We get about 500 calls per day. So there's 500 customers that are getting problems solved every single day. Absolutely, and that's really a part of our value proposition. Not only do we have great tools, but we have great problem solving capabilities. I love that sign right there, no excuses we will succeed. It's a great motto of this team. You just gotta own it, right? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Ooh, I love it. We service nearly every industry around the globe, probably every industry around the globe. Aerospace, automotive, all quarter our company, all industries we've been involved in for decades. We feel we know our customer better than somebody that's new to the marketplace here in the United States. That's what we do. Yeah, sometimes when people are upgrading to newer tools, like you said, they're used to running older technology, so we kind of help to give them a safe starting point. Uh, hey, you can run this material at this speed, this feed rate, and do what we can to get them the best tool life and the, the best results. It's important for us to make sure they understand that continued value, that we're obsoleting old technology, to help our customers improve their productivity, improve their operations. The spindle ain't turning, you ain't earning. So <laughs> you guys are helping exactly solve right. the problem. Cool, man, thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. Awesome. Hey, you know what? I actually was stuck running some ink now and somebody helped me over here. Yeah? Is there Denise here? Yeah, Denise, Denise. Denise is right back here. <laughs> All right, Jared, take care, man. You too. Hey, Hi. Titan, do you remember me? Yes, I do. Oh, nice, nice to, to meet you. you. I was having those problems with the ink canal cutters and everything you just, worked out okay. Oh yeah, you just solved my problem, made it all happen. Super. <laughs> so in real life at my CNC machine shop, I needed a cutter to cut ink canal and I called Canna Metal and talked to Denise. Just random, right? Yes. Random and you solved my problem, made it all happen. Cool. Thank you. Can I have a hug? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. You take care. Thank you. All right, you too. Take care. We're gonna take very good quality to perfect quality. We're gonna take very controlled processes to world-class controlled processes. So every tool that comes off a of machining center in our plant is perfect when it gets to our customer.